Do you know what the most dangerous toxin for your kidneys is? When it comes to toxins, many people are worried about the long list of medications they take every day. And while this is a perfectly normal concern to have, medications are supposed to do more good than harm. Some people are also worried about potassium in their diet. And let me tell you, this is another perfectly reasonable concern. If potassium accumulates too much, your heart might not work properly. But there is one toxin that's way more dangerous than any of this and that way too often is underestimated. I'm talking about phosphorus. Managing phosphorus intake can make all the difference between ending up in dialysis and starting to improve your kidney function. Today, I will show you exactly how to do that. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and lately I have been working with a patient who seemed to be a desperate case at first. I won't violate patient confidentiality, but this person was borderline stage 5 and improving their kidney function didn't seem reasonable. Everything changed, however, when I started this patient on a low protein, low phosphorus renal diet coupled with a phosphate binder, a supplement aimed at controlling phosphorus levels. More about this treatment, which should be standard for most patients, but it isn't, in today's video. Now, for this patient in particular, I also had to order the test for phosphorus levels. In fact, I have had many patients showing up with incomplete lab reports. This always worries me because it means their PCPs and their nephrologists are forgetting to manage some very important aspects of this patient's therapy. And serum phosphate level is one level in particular that worries me when it's missing. Now, this should be checked regularly every one to three months depending on your stage of CKD. But not all patients are being tested for this crucial health marker. In fact, what many patients don't know about phosphorus is that a large part of the therapy for CKD is aimed at controlling this mineral. And I'm not just talking about, you know, avoiding milk and dairy or reducing meat and fish intake. I'm talking about avoiding bone fractures, vascular calcification, thyroid problems, and even risk for loss of life. Yes, this is what you are risking if your phosphate level is not under control. Now, the scary part, a huge number of the CKD patients in stage 3B and 4 I met are not taking the appropriate treatment for hyperphosphatemia or too high phosphorus in blood. And taking action to stop this issue is exactly what I want to show you today. The goal? reversing the decline of your kidney function and yes this is possible but only if the most important love values are under control phosphate levels in particular so let's pretend for a moment that you are a CKD patient and that you are not particularly keen about losing your life or ending up in dialysis due to a preventable complication of kidney disease one of the first questions you may ask is how can i tell if my phosphorus is too high there are a few symptoms that can tell you if this level is too high. One of the first symptoms people notice are muscle cramps and weakness. This happens because phosphorus is an electrolyte used by the body as a signaling molecule, among other things. And what you should know about electrolytes is that they must always be in balance. In fact, if your phosphorus is too high, your calcium is usually going to be too low. When this happens, many muscles are not going to work properly it's like your muscles get an attitude what's that you want to move and maybe stop having all those cramps not today pal itching is also a common issue here high phosphate levels can cause calcium phosphate crystals to form and deposit in the skin leading to itching but unfortunately, since these are all common symptoms of kidney disease, in many cases, doctors are going to ignore them and the patient only knows that their phosphate is too high when their bones start to break. Oh, who could have thought that drinking milk was a way to make your bones weaker? I mean, imagine you're drinking a glass of milk thinking you're doing your bones a favor. Milk, it does a body good, they say, but they never tell you that this is only true if your GFR is above 60. 
Now, ideally, we shouldn't get to a point where breaking a bone is to be expected. And the way to do avoid that is monitoring phosphorus levels through lab reports and not through symptoms. This is why. CKD patients in stage 3 should be checked for serum phosphate at least every 90 days and those in stage 4 or 5 every 30 days. I know, I know what you are thinking. Catherine, you are always teaching us stuff that our doctors should be taking care of, not us. So, do we need to double check our doctor's work now? Well, in theory, you shouldn't, but I must also tell you that high phosphorus levels show up in my patients' charts more frequently than political ads during election season. And of course, what happens when a doctor ignores this is that their patients end up in dialysis. Now, what's unfortunate about that is that dialysis doesn't really remove phosphorus efficiently, leaving the patient once again to deal with an issue that should have been addressed long ago. So yeah, you either learn this stuff for yourself or you will have to talk your doctor into subscribing to my YouTube channel. I even have a TikTok channel if they don't have the time for my hour and half long YouTube lectures about kidney health. Now, let's get into the main tools we have to make sure you are not suffering from high phosphorus levels. So, there are two ways to make sure your phosphorus is always in range, the renal diet and the supplementation. We will see both now, starting with a question, what foods have phosphorus? The main sources of phosphorus in the human diet are animal-based foods and additives. Both of these things should be removed completely from your diet. To be more specific, when it comes to animal-based foods, we are talking about dairy products, meat, poultry, seafood, and egg yolks. And it's not just the phosphorus that's bad in this. These foods also have protein and they are too acid-forming. So, meat, poultry, seafood, and egg yolks. They must go completely. No exceptions. Nope, not even on Thanksgiving. And trust me, I know, telling someone they can't have turkey anymore is like asking them to give up their coffee on a Monday morning. But hey, still a lot better than the alternative. Now, what's even more dangerous than animal-based foods are foods with hidden phosphorus. Question, what foods have hidden phosphorus? Now, this is one of those dirty little secrets of the food industry. They are adding more phosphate additives to foods that are traditionally considered low phosphorus foods. Some examples include flavored water, breakfast cereals, and yes, even instant oatmeal, but also sodas, condiments, sauces, some baked goods, and worryingly enough, non-dairy creamers and milk alternatives. Now, milk alternatives are something I really didn't want to put on this list. Many, many CKD patients rely on, you know, rice milk or almond milk to add something to their rolled oats that doesn't taste like water. And now the food industry is trying to take that away from you as well. I mean, how do these people even sleep at night? They know that they are literally poisoning a part of the world population and just to make a few extra bucks. And they don't care. However, the way not to fall for their trap is to always double check the label of what you are buying. Even if it's not considered a food high in phosphorus. This you see on screen right now is a list of the ingredients you may see on food packages that mean there is added phosphorus in the food. If you see any of these, think of it like seeing a clown popping his head out of the storm drain. Turn around, pretend you saw nothing and just leave. Seriously, now guys, the question I always get asked when I mention phosphorus in foods. Catherine, why do you always recommend brown rice, oats, and whole grains when these foods do contain phosphorus? Well, because not all phosphorus is created equal. Phosphorus from plant-based foods is considered safe, while phosphorus from preservatives and animals is very bad for you. This is due to the way the human body absorbs nutrients. I'll explain this very briefly. Phosphorus in plants is usually in the form of phytic acid, which is not easily absorbed by humans because we lack the enzyme phytase that breaks it down. 
On the other hand, phosphorus in animal products is mostly in a form that is easily absorbed by humans. It's already very similar to what the human body uses. And the same is also true for phosphorus used as a preservative. This is why phosphorus that is added to our food and phosphorus from animal-based products is nearly 100% absorbed. But you only absorb about 30 to 40 percent of the phosphorus from plant based foods. This is why today we don't tell patients to completely avoid nuts, seeds, legumes, and whole grains just to make sure these foods don't come with unwanted additives. Okay, up next, let's talk about supplementation what to take in order to cut down those phosphorus levels. So let's say your diet is on point, but your phosphorus levels are still too high. Yes, this can happen sometimes. What we will do at this point is consider a phosphate binder. These are the real lifesaver of the supplement world. One of the few supplements I would really consider a magic pill. I mean, as long as you are taking them the right way. How do we do that? Well, CKD patients have been taking phosphate binders in a million different ways. I mean, some patients just pop thumbs from the grocery store. Not that I'd recommend that. I mean, Tums contain sugar and other additives, but they are calcium carbonate based and well, they work. But if you are going to follow the DIY route, consider taking a calcium carbonate supplement instead of Tums. Usually 1250 milligrams of calcium carbonate three times a day before meals is a good starting dose. But please get checked for your phosphate levels and talk to your nephrologist about that. In fact, not all patients will be prescribed a calcium carbonate-based phosphate binder. Some will need a different approach. Let me explain. If you take a look into your medicine cabinet and find a calcium-based binder, like Fosira or Calfron or some other prescription with calcium carbonate, well, congratulations, your doctor actually did their job you are already taking the right medication for you. Remember to always take those medications as directed, which usually is before meals. But as I was saying, some patients might get a prescription for non-calcium binders instead, like Renagel or Renvilla. This is also known as Sivelamer. Now, the reason why some patients are prescribed one type of medications or the other are calcium levels. You see, since the body uses calcium to bind to phosphorus, calcium is usually low or on the low end of normal in CKD patients. In that case, calcium carbonate is preferred. However, some patients, especially in late stage 4 or 5, may have too high calcium levels. In this case, non-calcium binders like Renagel and Renvilla are used. So yeah, and that's why you need a doctor. Now, something very important. The complications caused by too high phosphorus levels. Now guys, something else I want you to remember is that if you have high phosphorus levels, you are probably going to have high PTH as well. PTH is your parathyroid hormone and this is very important. This hormone is released from the body in order to get rid of all that extra phosphorus, all right? Unfortunately, the way the body does that is by putting the thyroid under huge pressure as well. Over time, this will result in an underactive thyroid. This is a super common issue, all right? When I get a new patient that's in stage 3B or 4, phosphorus and PTH levels are some of the first thing I check because they are almost always out of range. And I know this may sound strange for some people, but men have a thyroid as well, not just the ladies. Yeah, the human body is incredible. Anyway, if you have high phosphorus levels, make sure your thyroid levels are being checked. Having an underactive thyroid is bad. I met patients that weren't able to lose weight, not even by taking Ozempic, just because their thyroid wasn't working as it should. So keep that in mind, especially because this issue is easily treatable, but only as long as it has been, you know, diagnosed. And if you want to know more about how to treat the most common complications of kidney disease, this video appears for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Ciao. Arrivederci.